So you probably clicked on this video because you want to open your own online vintage store and don't know where to start? Well, you came to the right place because this video is for you. So if you guys didn't know, I actually have my own online Instagram vintage store called Retro Radar and that's where I sell a bunch of thrifted pieces, reworked pieces, and pieces that I even pull out from my own wardrobe that I sell because I believe that they deserve a better home and I don't really get to use them as much. So yeah, that's basically what I sell. I'm so happy that thrifting is a normal thing now because before it used to be looked down upon and it used to be seen as unsanitary and unhygienic and I remember in high school I used to thrift a lot of jackets and whenever I would wear them to school my classmates would ask me oh where did you get that it's so cool and I'd be like oh it was a gift because I was really shy to admit that I thrifted those pieces because it wasn't really a normal thing back then. It just shows that you don't need to shell out so much money and buy designer pieces, branded pieces in order to come up with a cool outfit and express yourself with clothing. So before we get onto the steps on how to start your own online vintage store, I wanted to mention that today's video is actually sponsored by Skillshare. So if you guys aren't familiar with Skillshare, then Skillshare is basically a platform where you can take a bunch of different classes, take a bunch of different lessons and it could be about anything it could range from your hobbies from your career from your profession and you could just take a bunch of different classes and overall learn and educate yourself because I feel like it's really important to educate yourself regardless of whether you're a student a teacher a businessman businesswoman whoever you are I feel like it's really important so I wanted to share this with you guys because I feel like it's related to our topic in the video today so a bunch of classes that I've been taking that I feel like are really helpful are growing your creative business through Instagram by Kat Kokilet I don't know how to say her last name but I feel like this is a really good class because it kind of shows you how social media plays a role in marketing and business and all of that stuff and then next up we have e-commerce essentials how to start a successful online business so that's the cool thing about Skillshare is that you can apply these classes to real-life situations and real-life scenarios and if you guys are interested in this then I actually have a link down below in the description box that you guys can use because I'm gonna be giving away a free trial for Skillshare premium for a limited time so if you guys are interested in that then definitely check the link in the description box down below I feel like it's gonna be really beneficial for you guys and really helpful for you guys so yeah just wanted to quickly mention that so thank you so much again Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's move on to the steps of how to start your own online vintage business all right let's start with the basics so how and where to start personally for me i feel like it's really important to come up with a business name that's not only catchy but also easy to remember i used to have an instagram store name before i named it retro radar it used to be called vintage collective underscore ph and i noticed that not a lot of customers were going to it because it was kind of hard to remember that name so i feel like it's really important to just come up with something unique and something easy to remember and something different so that um, your customers can remember it and it can kind of like you know they can kind of always come back to it so let's start off with inventory so regardless of what business you're gonna put up I feel like it's really important to consider your inventory and where you're gonna get your supplies for me an online vintage seller I need to know when I'm gonna get my vintage pieces and where I'm gonna get them so that place would have to be the thrift store but sadly since we are in a pandemic right now, I don't think that thrifting is the safest option. So I haven't been thrifting, which is so sad. I haven't thrifted since the start of the pandemic, which makes me sad. But yeah, what I've been doing right now is just going through my own wardrobe and choosing stuff that I don't really wear anymore and stuff that I know could go to a better home. So yeah, that's just what I've been doing. Sometimes I rework the pieces if I know it needs some alterations. So yeah, it just really depends on the clothing piece and what it needs and what 
alterations or changes that I think needs to be done to it. So after sourcing, the next step is to organize your inventory. And the way that I do this is by creating an Excel spreadsheet and I feel like this is one of the most efficient ways because it's very organized and you can kind of list down all of the items that you're going to be selling and track who has paid, who hasn't paid, and the buyers, your details, and pricing, all of that kind of stuff. I feel like it's really helpful and easy to do it on Excel. So let's talk about shooting. So this has got to be the most tiring part of the whole process of selling online because it's a lot more tedious compared to if you're selling food or jewelry because, for example, you're selling cinnamon rolls. Then you dedicate this whole day to shooting your cinnamon rolls and shooting products and you accumulate a lot of photos that you could stock up on and spread throughout the month and just keep on posting because it's not like the cinnamon roll is gonna change, you know? It's not like you're gonna change the recipe for that or change the appearance of it. So you can just keep on reusing different photos of that cinnamon roll. You know what I mean? So yeah, for clothing pieces, for vintage clothing pieces, once you shoot this, it's done. You can't reuse the photo and you can't stock up on this photo because obviously there's only one piece of this and you need to just replenish and keep shooting more clothes that come in your stock. The tools that I use to take my photos for my store are this tripod that's really handy. It's a suction tripod that you can stick to your window. I attach my phone to it and then I use this Bluetooth remote to take the photo. So yeah, I feel like this is really helpful. I either attach this to a mirror or to my window. So I highly recommend you guys get this. This is also really helpful if you just want to take Instagram pictures alone or TikToks and all that. So I'm going to link these down below so you guys can get your hands on them. And yeah, those are just really helpful tools when you're shooting alone because we are strong, independent women. So there are five factors that I consider whenever I'm shooting photos. So the first one is the most important one and it is lighting. Lighting will either So lighting will either make or break your photo and you want to make sure that the clothing piece that you're posting is accurate to how it looks like in person. So the second factor to consider is to not add any filters to your photo because I feel like adding filter just kind of confuses the photo and confuses the buyer. There are a lot of instances that I've had where I bought something online that I thought was black but when I received it, it was actually brown. So yeah, it kind of just disappoints the buyer, to be honest. The third one is to have a theme. And this is something that's optional, it's not really required, but I feel like it's fun, it kind of adds flavor in there. The fourth one is to take when-worn photos and show how the photos look like if a person was gonna wear them. Kind of just give the person an idea of how the clothes would look like and how they could style it. That brings us to the last thing, and that's to take some solo product shots and just show how the product looks like on its own, the brand, the details of it, if there's any flaws. So yeah, those are my five factors that I like to consider whenever I am shooting. So let's move on to my favorite step of the whole process, which is listing. Ah, listing. This is my favorite step because it's just so rewarding to finally be able to post those photos that you spend so much time on. I wanted to share with you guys three platforms that you could use to list your products and post your products on. So the first one is Depop and this is more famous for Western countries. Yeah, it's not really that big of a thing here in the Philippines and in Asia so I don't really use it. But yeah, I wanted to share that in case any of you guys are using Depop and are familiar with it. The second platform that I wanted to share with you guys is Carousel. So this is what is more common here in the Philippines. You can find anything on Carousel. Like I swear, literally last night I was on Carousel shopping for plates. You can find anything on there and I feel like it's really fun. And I shop on Carousel a lot. This Tommy Hilfiger jumpers from Carousel. This Nike Windbreaker Carousel. So yeah, you just definitely need to keep on digging on Carousel to find some stuff. And the third platform that I wanted to talk about is Instagram and that's what I use right now. And I don't know, I feel like it's just really creative there and a lot of Instagram stores are coming out with such cool stuff. And just they're just so creative on Instagram. It's also a really cool way to share to people what you got from the store. I love talking to you guys too who buy my stuff. So when you finally decide to post your products, it's important to consider some descriptions to your post. So those descriptions should be the brand of the product, the size of the product, the condition of the product, the br- uh, I already said brand, the price of the product, and if there's flaws, you need to mention that too, and you just need to be transparent and honest because you don't want to disappoint your buyers. 
So after you've posted your products and sold them, then it's time to move on to packaging. I feel like packaging is one of the factors that shows off how much effort your brand puts into the products and to the customers. So I've actually been trying to work on my packaging recently because I want it to be more sustainable and more eco-friendly. Currently, the packaging that I've been using is plastic, which I'm not a fan of, but I've had this for a really long time and it would be a really wasteful thing to, to not put these to use. So it's just the best way to use them up first and then be able to switch to a more sustainable packaging. And for the packaging that I use, it looks like this. I use these silver little Ziploc bags. Whenever I send this out to customers, I always try to remind them to reuse this packaging. And then I include a sticker and a bracelet that I customized for the name of the customer. Yeah, this is my little packaging bag. This is where I keep all of my supplies that I'll be needing. Some string for the bracelets that I make. I have some beads in here, the plastic, stickers, temporary tattoos. I really work hard on my packaging. It's so much effort to be able to, you know, hand make all of the bracelets one by one. And I don't know, it just makes me so tired. But at the end of the day, it's so worth it. I feel like my packaging is my pride and joy. And I love including little gifts for you guys because I love you guys, you're the best. So this brings us to our last and final step, which is shipping out the products. Finally, whenever I hand the packages to the courier, I just, I don't know, I feel like a newborn baby. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't have any more stress. I don't need to deal with this anymore. I mean, like, not that I'm complaining. I'm really grateful and thankful that I have packages to ship out, but you know, it is kind of a stressful process. It's really rewarding to be able to see your packages being delivered to the buyers and hearing your responses, seeing your stories and reposting them. It's just such an amazing feeling for me so thank you so 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 much for all the support i love you guys so much and yeah shipping out packages so let's talk about couriers so there are different couriers depending on your area so i think you should definitely do research on which areas are covered by certain couriers so the courier that i currently use is sonic express and this isn't sponsored by them in any way by the way i just really love them so sonic express if you're watching this i love you but i decided to use them because they cover not only metro manila but also provincial areas and the reason that i decided to choose them too is because their packaging which i have here is eco-friendly it says that this plastic is eco-friendly and biodegradable Please use Sonic Express plastic pouches wisely to save Mother Earth. Their packaging is sustainable and I feel like that's a really good thing to keep in mind. So packaging pouches also come with waybills. So these are what waybills are. These are basically the receipts, 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 receipts that you write on with your details, your customer's details, waybill, and parcel pouch. Really, really important. So those are basically all of the steps that you need to keep in mind if you're planning to open your own online vintage store. I hope that I was able to help you guys in any way in this video and I hope that I was informative enough. I tried my best. I really wanted to discuss every point. So yeah, that was basically it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I will see you guys next week for another video. Bye guys!